Today, I've been joined by the Minister of Agriculture in Germany. I'm a big fan of food security, big fan of agriculture, and um, I think I have only 10 minutes. So I want to ask you this question. The leaders of Africa today are saying that the Russia-Ukraine war has effect on food security in Africa, of which I don't understand. I mean, Russia and Ukraine is in Europe. We are on a different continent. Why must a war happen in another continent affect us on the motherland? So I just want to know from your own point of view, what do you think about this? Well, Ukraine, uh, as well as Russia, are very important contributors with fertilizers. Mm. And used to be and with grain, and therefore it has an impact. Ukraine itself uh, was one of the most important contributors for the World Food Program. So okay. obviously the war, the unjustified war of Russia against Ukraine had a huge impact. And unfortunately, Putin is using hunger as a weapon, as he's using refugees as a tool to destabilize. And he wants to divide us, Europeans and, and many countries in Africa, uh, to forget about the reason of this crisis, that there is this war and there is no need for a war. There is no need that Putin attacks his neighbor, you know, let their neighbors be their neighbors. You know, we have to live together on this planet without attacking each other. And this is something Putin has to understand. But obviously, hunger was there before the intervention of Russia towards Ukraine. That's sometimes something we Europeans or some of our European colleagues tend to forget because mm. of the climate crisis, because of the loss of species. So that also has an impact. So uh, what we have to understand is we have to fight all these crises together. Yeah, but my, my problem is the fact that Ukraine and Russia produces or uh, export wheat to Africa, but Africa got um, the world 60% arable land. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand why can't we feed ourselves, by the way? Well, that's a good question. You have to ask not only me as a minister for agriculture in Germany, also some of the governments in Africa. Yeah. And of course, also some of the politicians that had responsibility in our side, because for a long time, the idea was we export grain to Africa to feed Africa, but Africa could feed itself if we just give local farmers back the power, if we just remember what used to be produced that was much more, uh, you know, resilient to the climate crisis, using less water than grain from Germany. But on our side, the problem is that many people in Germany and in Europe think the solution is exports, which sometimes leads to a situation that local farmers in Africa produce more expensive than our sometimes subsidized products that we export to Africa. So we destroy your local markets. Mm -hmm. Then when some people in Africa try to come to Europe as refugees, we tell them we don't want you. So there's a cycle that we have to stop, that we have to end. But to be fair, we also mm -hmm. have to add to that rule of law, fight against corruption, giving, empowering women, in particular young farmers, uh -huh fighting against uh, food losses. That is also part of the whole picture. So it's reforms that are necessary in some of the states in Africa. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we have to question our narrative. And if we work together, I think we can really make a difference. You mentioned something about women empowerment. And I want to know um, why is female um, empowerment important within the food and agriculture sector? Why is it so important? Well, you know, from many studies, if you give power, access to education, but as well money to women, the money goes into sustainable investments, education of children, health, and so on. And sometimes, unfortunately, if you give money to men, the money goes to consumption, short-term consumption. Hmm. So it's also a matter of an efficient use of, of, of money. It's also a way to find cor fight corruption and use money more efficient if you empower women. That's crucial. But the same is true also, by the way, if you empower youth, young farmers. That's why when I had uh, the summit of farmers, uh, of uh, agriculture ministers from 64 countries from the whole planet, many from Africa, by the way, in Berlin recently, one of the things I tried to reform from the past was I added young farmers, I added women, I added Fridays for Future, I added NGOs that told us ministers 
that we that we have to listen to them, not that we teach them. We listen to them. And that's one of the things uh, I would love to change. Uh, by the way, during that uh, conference, we also signed a memorandum of, uh, of understanding with the African Union. My colleague, Commissioner Sacco from the African Union, who is in charge of agricultural policy, uh, that we want to share our expertise, our research, because that, I think, is crucial. We have so many universities, institutions that do research for us, but this needs to be accessible for those people who are the practitioners in Africa. Is the African Union really listening to you? Is that the African Union, are they listening? Are they practicing what you told them? Because I, I'm coming from the motherland and I, I have the opportunity to interview a lot of young farmers and even women that are into farming. And almost all of them complain about this. So I just want to know what yeah. the expertise that you share with African Union, are they really like practicing well, it? Let me say it this way. Sometimes bureaucracy is slow. That that's the same case in our on our side. Yeah, who am I to 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 lecture uh, colleagues and friends in Africa because we have the same difficulties and challenges in on our side. But what I want to say is, uh, what I did was before we de developed the Africa strategy in my ministry, I told all my uh, advisors, I told my state secretaries, you know, reach out to our African colleagues and ask them what they advise us to do. And guess what the response was? The response was, well, that's the first time that somebody asks us how we see things in Africa before they develop a strategy out from Europe mm. to teach Africans what is wrong and right in Africa. Mm. So maybe that's also part of the new thinking that we need. Uh, you know, it's, it's not the smartest idea to develop ideas out there in Europe mm. what the future in Africa should look like without excluding young people, excluding women, excluding, excluding practitioners. And of course, as well, my colleagues, the ministers uh, of farming and, 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 and food in Africa. I think my final question will be like um, where I'm coming from in terms of um, the number of people that I interview or even the youth of Africa in general. I would say a percentage of the youth of Africa thinks that agriculture is for poor people. Have you ever heard anything like that before? That, that ag agriculture itself, because to me, I believe that agriculture is the future. Right, agriculture Absolutely. is the backbone of so many economies, and rural but areas are the future because that is where we feed the world. That is where we feed our cities, and this is something we really have to value. Rural areas, we really have to value farmers, uh, and we have to understand that this is a joint fight. We will only manage this fight if we jointly work together to feed the world, to feed the planet and as well to fight the climate crisis, the loss of biodiversity. And as long as we see this as a contradiction, we will lose all the free uh, things together. And, you know, we have also the same debates in Germany. Many farmers give up and uh, think that there is no future for them. So it's part of my obligation to give young farmers a future in my country. But at the same time, I'm happy to see young farmers in Africa taking the challenge, taking the responsibility. That's good news for the planet if young people decide that they want to become farmers. Is climate change affecting the way of farming in Germany now? Yes, of course, it's affecting us as well. For a long time, we thought this is a problem far away for other regions of the world. Sure. You know, we sure. saw at the news at the evening, the news from Pakistan, from India, the heat waves, the flood catastrophe. And, and hunger crisis, uh, also because of uh, climate effects. And now we're touched by it as well. We had flood as well. We had during the summer, you know, kind of deserts close to Berlin. So it affects us all. And we have to understand, you know, it's a matter of time that we're all affected by us. So let's join that fight together. Before I let you go, your final message to young farmers. If you have a message for young farmers out there or any young African in general, any young leader out there who is willing to be a farmer someday, if you have a message to encourage them, what would that message be? Yeah, just go out to the old wisdom and, of course, use technology, use digitalization. That's perfect. That's great, you know. But don't repeat the mistakes we did in the past that we thought, you know, if we modernize without taking into consideration, you know, that there is a price to pay if you oversee the climate effects, if you oversee the effects that we need soil, that we need nature, that we cannot fight against Mother Nature. 
that's the wrong path because mm -hmm. the money you have to invest to repair that is much more than the money you save because you go into productivity without knowing the the borders of, of this planet. So Mother Earth has wisdom and we should not oversee that wisdom. Thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate your time. Pleasure. All right. Can I shake your hand? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>